Hello students. Today I am going to talk on biosynthesis of pure nucleotides by de novo synthesis. Before talking about purine, first let me give you a brief idea about nucleotide biosynthesis. Nucleotides are composed of three components, nitrogenous base like purines and pyrimidines, pentose sugar, ribose in RNA and deoxyribose in DNA and phosphate. The biosynthesis of nucleotides can occur in two ways. De novo pathway, de novo means new synthesis of nucleotides using simpler metabolic precursors such as amino acids, ribose, phosphate, carbon dioxide and ammonia. Since human beings can synthesize the purines and pyrimidines de novo, they are said to be prototrops. Salvage pathways recycle the free bases and nucleotides released from nucleic acid breakdown. Both pathways can synthesize purines and pyrimidines. De novo pathway is the major pathway for purine synthesis. The purine nucleotides are synthesized by most of the tissues. However, the major site is the liver. This pathway operates in the cytoplasm. During de novo synthesis, purine ring is built upon a ribose 5-phosphate nucleus. Purine bases are not synthesized as such but they are formed as ribonucleotides then later are converted to deoxyribonucleotides. The first parent nucleotide formed is inosine monophosphate. From this AMP and GMP are formed. AMP that is adenosine monophosphate then forms ATP and GMP then later on with the addition of phosphate forms GTP. Pyrimidin forms UMP from which forms UTP. It forms CTP. UMP which is uridine monophosphate then forms deoxy UMP and deoxy TTP. So this is the de novo synthesis as well as the salvage pathway. There are two uh, ways of synthesizing nucleotides. But today I'll be going to talk only on the de novo synthesis of purines. Purines, these are, this is a uh, ring of purine. And the major purines are adenine and guanine. Adenine is 6 amino. On the 6th position there is amino. So it is adenine. And on the second position it is amino and 6 it is oxy so it is guanine. And different compounds contribute to the skeleton of purine rings. N1 of purine arises from the amino group of aspartate. Hmm? C2 and C8 are derived from formate. C2 is from formyl tetrahydrofolate and C8 is from methanyl tetrahydrofolate. N3 and N9 are contributed by the amide group of glutamine. C4, C5 and N7 are obtained from glycine while the last C6 is from the respiratory carbon dioxide. So these all nine different compounds contribute to the skeleton of purine ring. This is. There are around 15 steps. This will look a little bit confusing, but I will try to make it easier for you. I'll be showing you the structures also, but you don't have to learn the structures. They are just for you to understand how the purine rings are built. You can write in text form as shown below, but it will be better if it is shown in flowcharts. But label it properly and it should be large enough for the examiner to see clearly all reactions and enzymes. Don't try to congest in small space. 
If you see the first substrate is ribose 5-phosphate. Ribose 5-phosphate you get from HMP pathway of carbohydrate metabolism. Here you can see on the fifth carbon there is a phosphate. Ribose 5-phosphate reacts with ATP and forms phosphoribosal pyrophosphate. You can abbreviate it as PRPP. Here PRPP synthetase is the enzyme. ATP gives its P pyrophosphate to ribosyl, ribose 5-phosphate to form phosphoribosal pyrophosphate. Now the new purine rings is assembled on the ribose 5-phosphate. Okay. This step is also used for the synthesis of pyrimidine nucleotides, nucleotide coenzymes and also for salvage pathway. Hence, you cannot consider this as this first step of de novo pathway. It is called the preliminary or the preparatory step. Now the second step, glutamine donates its amide nitrogen to PRPP forming phosphoribosyl amine. The enzyme catalyzing this is PRPP glutamyl amidotransferase. Here glutamine gives off its, gives its amido that is amidotransferase occurs. So the enzyme is PRPP glutamyl amidotransferase. So if you see this diagram, this structure, here the amino group is bound. Now if you see this 9 number, this 9 number, this is actually denoting the N9 of purine ring. So this is the N9 of purine ring and that forms the phosphoribosyl amine. Now how you are going to remember these steps? It's simple, you have to remember which all substrates are added. For here in this step, glutamine is added. So now if you see this, first it was phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate. Now when glutamine gives its amide, so it will become phosphoribosyl amine. Here it was pyrophosphate, now it has become amine. So now the product is phosphoribosyl amine. And because uh, amido is transferred from glutamine, the enzyme is PRPP, glutamyl amidotransferase. Okay. So uh, what I am going to do is, I'll put a table with the substrate which are going to be added for each step. So you can uh, see that in the descriptive answer. So it will be easy for you to remember how the product and the enzymes are named. Okay. So I'll show you with the next step. Here glycine. Glycine condenses with phosphoribosyl amine in presence of ATP to form glycine amide ribosyl 5-phosphate. Now here it was phosphoribosyl amine. Okay. Now it has become adding a glycine. See if you see in the structure here this was a 9, N9. Now it is adding the glycine. C4, 5 and N7. This is glycine. So it this ribosyl amine will become glycine amide and then ribosyl 5-phosphate. You can also abbreviate it as GAR. So to write it easily, here you don't have to congest it. You can just write GAR synthetase. So it is glycine amide ribosyl 5-phosphate. Now going to the next step. Here formyl is group is given. That is formyl transferase and Methyl tetrahydrofolate gives its formyl group to GAR. So now the name will be here instead of glycine amide it will become formyl glycine amide. And then it will be ribosyl 5-phosphate. So here if you see this on the 8th carbon there is a formyl group. This was already there. Now if you see here. 
so this was already there and then the on the eighth carbon there is a formyl group is added so here the product will become formyl glycinamide riboxyl 5 phosphate okay so the enzyme is this gar formyl transfer so gar formyl transfer is occurs and that's why this enzyme's name next glutamine transfers the second amide so nitrogen to form formyl glycine amidine so if you look here properly here it was glycine amide well second amino group is added that is total there will be three one two and this is the third so here it was already glycine amide formyl glycine amide and another amino group is added so it will become formyl glycine amidine riboxyl 5 phosphate can you see on the this is the another amino is added so it will become formyl glycine amidine riboxyl 5 phosphate and it is abbreviated as fgam so here again the enzyme is synthetase so and it requires atp so it is fgam synthetase then if you see look here properly all the the, this ring is almost complete. So with the help of a ring closure and a synthetase enzyme, the ring is closed with the elimination of water. So here you find this is the imidazole ring with a amino uh, group. So it is amino imidazole riboxyl 5-phosphate and it can be abbreviated as AIR. So the enzyme is AIR synthetase. Okay, so this is a ring closure and a amidazole ring is formed. So, continuing with amino imidazole ring, that is, next step we will see, there is a insertion of carbon dioxide on the carbon number, that is on the 6th position of the purine ring. So, 6th position carbon is given by carbon dioxide, here the enzyme required is carboxylase. Okay, so it forms, now let's see how the product will be formed. It is amino imidazole. It was amino imidazole riboxyl phosphate. Now a carboxyl group is added. So the name will be amino imidazole carboxylate riboxyl 5 phosphate. Okay, so here uh, this is the sixth position of the purine ring. Now, N1 of purine is formed by the condensation of aspartate. Hmm? So, it forms succinyl amino imidazole carboxyamide riboxyl 5-phosphate. Don't get confused. This aspartate is giving its amino group to the that is the N1 of the purine ring. So whatever is left this of the aspartate is a succinyl. Okay. So that's why it is written as succinyl. And here there is amino. Uh, this was amino imidazole. And here the carboxy group has a amino of the aspartate. So it is succinyl. This one. And then amino amid imidazole and carboxy, this sixth carbon, with the amino it becomes carboxy amide. Okay, so it is succinyl amino imidazole carboxy amide riboxyl 5 phosphate. So here there is a synthetase, ATP is required, and this product is formed. Now we just want the amino group that is a N1. So what we are going to do is we will remove the succinyl. With the help of adenylosuccinate lyase, fumarate molecule is removed. Okay, so what is remaining is carboxyamide. 
this is carboxyamide so the succinyl is removed as fumarate so now it will become amino imidazole carboxyamide ribosyl 5 phosphate next a formyl group is transferred so again the uh, enzyme will be formyl transferase huh? on this the formyl transferase occurs so here if you see it was amino imidazole now it will become form amino form amino imidazole and then everything will be the same carboxyamide ribosyl 5 phosphate so if just have the look in the picture in the structure it is this C8 of purine ring is given by formyl tetrahydrofolate. Now if you can see the ring is almost complete. So now with the help of ring closure cyclohydrolase elimination of water the first purine nucleotide is formed that is inosine monophosphate. Inosine monophosphate then will lead to the formation of AMP and GMP. So first let's see the synthesis of formation of adenosine monophosphate. The first enzyme required is adenylosuccinate synthetase. It condenses aspartate to IMP. It also requires a GTP and forms adenylosuccinate so uh, if you remember adenosine was 6 amino so now we require a amino on the sixth position so here it is adenylosuccinate now we will remove this succinate we just want the amino so the succinyl group is removed in presence of adenylosuccinate lyase it is removed as fumarate and it only the amino group is remain left over and that forms the adenosine monophosphate. Now coming to the formation of GMP. GMP, IMP in presence of NAD catalyzed enzyme IMP dehydrogenase forms xanthosine monophosphate. So this is xanthosine monophosphate. We want a amino on second position to form a guanosine. So now see the next step. Glutamine will give its amino group and so it's catalyzed by GMP synthetase. It requires a ATP to form guanosine monophosphate. So if you see on the second position it is amino, on the sixth position it is oxy. So this is guanosine monophosphate. If you see phosphate is over here on the ribose. So it is guanosine monophosphate. While in adenosine it is six amino. So it is adenosine monophosphate. So if you see here for the synthesis of adenosine monophosphate GTP was required. For the synthesis of guanosine monophosphate ATP was required. Both AMP and GMP can be converted to their corresponding di and triphosphate to participate in most of the metabolic reactions. This occurs by the transfer of phosphate group from ATP and it is catalyzed by nucleoside monophosphate kinase and forms the nucleoside diphosphate. Again it requires a ATP and a nucleoside diphosphate kinase to form nucleoside triphosphate. Okay so that's it. Uh, this was about the de novo pathway. Now in my next video I will show you the regulation and the inhibitors of purine synthesis. Okay, so that was about the de novo pathway. Uh, please like my video and do subscribe my channel so that you get the updates of my new videos. And there is a link below this video uh, which will give you the descriptive answer of the de novo pathway.
ओके थैंक यू